bring the meeting to order 704. The first order of business would be to review the minutes from January 19th. Thank you again for getting your notes today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think everybody has a copy of um, um, what George has provided as well. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I don't know how you want to approach this. We have the original minutes, and then uh, some uh, taking a stab at some edits that George provided. Well, should we look at that one? My thoughts. I read through it, and it looks pretty good. I've mm -hmm. got two little minor typing uh, things I suggest we put in, but other than that, I think. It it adds some stuff that we didn't have here, I think. Right. Especially the uh, last one there, the, the old business, which uh, the, we need to definitely put in that we voted on it. Yeah. That's a good point. And approved it. So, yeah. so th then let's let's pursue the re revised edition of the of the edits as submitted by George. So as as our working copy, because it's not working. So what edits do we have for this revised version? Um, I just have two, like I said, very minor things. Next to the last line on the first page, uh, that we put our heads down and work, I suggest we work it, work it out together rather than we work out together. It's kind of like, sounds like we're at the gym. <laughs> yeah. so, paragraph on the second page, uh, add an S to finding a fact, findings of fact, uh, about the fourth line from the bottom. And that's it for me. Mr. Sergeant, anything from, from your end? I can go on with that. Well, the rest, they read it. They read it. Changes. No, you fine. Okay. George? No. The only thing I found, um, let's see, in the first paragraph, where it's um, the, the third line, updated the shoreland zoning, I think it's a spelling. Oh, audience, yeah. 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 Audience. Well, somehow it's supposed to be audience, so. I, in my brain, the first time I read that, I said, that's fine, and then I looked at it, and that doesn't mean And then, then the other thing, I, kind of a question um, about, about the minutes. At some point when we had this discussion at our last meeting, it seemed like um, Mr. Lessard did not understand that um, that the applicability of the current ordinance um, was for all signs. Or, yeah, the applicability of the ordinance was for all signs as he had hoped it would be. And it was a, kind of a 
light bulb moment for him to understand that what he was asking for would not be met by what we're doing with the, with the ordinance, which has applicability ability to only being stated in the ordinance. Right. Well, which there is was a, a real, subset. Yeah. yeah, it was a real shift in, in, in like thinking of what could be done to manage his or address his concerns. So, I don't know, I don't know how do you all feel about that, but I felt it was- Oh, you think something like that should be added to the minutes to capture that point? I, I do, o only because he had, he had been so um, adamant about changing it. It seemed like after he understood that, that this ordinance does not apply to all things, it's just where the ordinance applies. And what he was trying to do was accomplish sign things which would be addressed in a sign ordinance. Uh, yeah, so we sign ordinance. But if it's too difficult to make that subtle distinction, that's fine. I just recall that as being one of the things that we, yeah. I saw him go like, a, oh, you know, and kind of understood that there was a difference. Yeah, well, I, don't, I, I don't really think it's that germane to the whole discussion anyway, so I, what we have here is just fine. We can just move on. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, he reverted back later on, so I wasn't sure whether he understood and or, or not. You know, I, I remember the aha moment um, where, you know, it, it seemed like he was get understanding for the first time that the Commercial Development Review Ordinance only applied to certain types of develop, new developments, and not the and not, it wasn't a, intended to ha, uh, have the sign standard or any of the other standards to block, apply to everything, you know, to all signs in town. But uh, as you said, I'm not sure when he left that he didn't forget what the aha moment of when it was back, <coughs> I still think what it was. Yeah. It never, I'm not sure it totally clicked in. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm good, just. Yeah, but that, yeah, no, that's good that you. I forgot about that. So having discussed that, are there any other edits to the re revised version so far? We have? We have other than what we did. No? Uh, I'd entertain a motion from somebody. A motion to accept the minutes of January 19th as amended. I'll second that. Okay. Any, any more discussion? All those in favor? We have the digital file on the Super. Um, you're Travis George? Yes. Yes. That's going to get me hit by I get more than all of them. So, uh, you want me to go ahead? Well, I, I guess so because if you are here, uh, it's okay with the board. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You would be second on visits if you were here, so that is yeah, sure. back your birthday party. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm Travis George. I live here in Belgrade mm -hmm. a couple years now. Um, I know you're probably all familiar with Airbnb, right? Mm -hmm. okay. well, I'm slow. What was that again? Um, Airbnb, a short-term rental. Uh, can you uh, explain that? Sure. I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Sure. It's, it's, like a, it's a short-term rental service. It's on this website. There's a lot of them. That's just the most popular one. You basically rent out your house for the weekend, the day, an hour, whatever you want to do. Um, if I may uh, compliment or supplement what you're saying, it's, it's a way of sharing property through web services and the planning for that matter. So in other words, you can go to a website and then you don't have to have them, um, like you don't have to hang a shingle. Mm -hmm. You go to a website and if you wanted to, for example, rent a, rent a space, Mr. George may have something to fit your needs or someone in Washington State or Hawaii mm -hmm. or wherever. Okay. With that system, would Travis actually do the, the rental and dealing with the people or is there some home base or office that uh, will do that for him? The money transfers hands digitally, but the, all the other stuff is done in person. So where are you located? I'm on Lakeshore Drive across from Mm -hmm. Do you know Michael Everly? Yes, he's my neighbor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you know him? Pardon me? Do you, do you know him? I don't know oh, him, but he, uh, yeah, he uh, also but sent a letter yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, uh, so that's a total separate thing, but the, our, our 
specific issue is there is a, a, a home in the neighborhood that is having some problems with us, but the issue is also for all of Delbury that, I, that we have seen over the past two or three years has become more popular. Um, one of the problems is that the majority of the people who are doing this all over the country, but especially here in Belgrade, are not people who live here in Belgrade. And they have a house in Portland, and they've bought a few houses over here because of the leaks, and now they're renting them out every day of the summer, which I personally don't care if someone who lives at their house is going away for a week and they want to rent their house out and make some money, good for them. But the problem is we got 20 frat kids coming and parking all the way up down the street, throwing parties every single day of the summer. The other issue is that there's no limitation. If we, if I, if I was to rent my house out for the, as a property to somebody, I could not rent that house out to 21 people. You know, I, I still can only rent it out to the maximum that the septic system can handle and that it's zoned for. But they're renting that house out to 20 people for a week, right on the lake. Well, the septic system's not going to handle that. Um, there's been multiple issues with it leaking into having problems with their with their septic system having problems with noise in the neighborhood. And uh, we were told, you know, call the police. You know, so we call the police. I probably called them about 50 times last summer from all the people that live there. They come over and they said, there's no ordinance that says that they can't be here. So, um, they didn't deal with like the noise and- They said, can you guys can you guys quiet down? Because that's, that's all they said that they'd say. Yeah. People would quiet down for 30 minutes if the person drives away and they go back to having their keg party and not, not, not in the back. So this is going on down on lakefront property or as well as... And it's all, it, our, our issue is right on lakefront property, but I, I have multiple people that, uh, that I've been talking to all over Belgrade that it happens to. Um, it's just more prevalent with lakefront property because people are coming here in the summer to be on the lake and do those things. But there are properties that are in central Belgrade that people are renting that are having the same problems. People coming over, shooting guns. You know, they don't know any of the laws around here. They're right at people's houses. They say, oh, we're from New York. I already know that the, the zoning for the for these properties is residential, and having a short-term lease already violates the the zoning, so it's not a transient zone. Uh, but that's not being enforced. So I would like, kind of, my point of coming here is to to start the discussion, but having some specific talks about what can we do um, to mitigate this problem. And I don't want to infringe on people's rights to be able to do what they want with their property. Um, Unfortunately, that I wish I had that paperwork with me, but I will forward to you. But there are multiple towns in, in the state of Maine who have already looked at this problem and have already started to address it. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that they've done are that you must you must be a primary residence if you're going to do this. Um, you have to have a maximum of six people, or if you have a large house, no more than the maximum capacity of your septic system. Um, and uh, if you have a registration for regular rentals, which I'm not sure if that'll grade registers their rentals. The other one thing you mentioned about the zoning kind of thing, the only zoning t Belgrade has is Shoreland zoning, and you know, one of the uh, at least our policy when we had the Shoreland zoning unit was that uh, rentals, renting a summer house or whatever to somebody else uh, was, cons was not considered commercial from the perspective of and zoning ordinance, so, because, right. uh, and I know this Airbnb may be increasing the problem yes. because of how it's done and whatever, but, uh, you know, people have been renting their house or camp on the water for eons, eons or whatever, uh, it's maybe becoming more of a problem, but it hasn't, but it's not a violation to, yeah. to rent but it's typically done. Pardon me. It's been typically done for uh, a month or an entire summer. So or they don't, they don't rent it out to different people every day of the week. Yeah, I was wondering. One of the questions I had was, do you know are your problem the problem areas? Is it like rentals, or is it just for a short period of time, a weekend, yeah, or something? Or because typically 
you know, the people who rent for the week or the month yeah, are, the week. you know, They're not a problem. decent people. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. whatever. So there have been people who came and rented the house for a week, you know, and they were all perfectly fine. They didn't even know they were there. And they were in the lake just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But the uh, majority of the time, it was one, two day things. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is these guys are getting together in Massachusetts or New Hampshire and saying, hey, this, this guy's running his house for $600 a day. Let's the 20 of us get together, pay $25 each, yeah. and we'll rent this place out. So you got cars, like, literally all the way down the street, parked on the side. Did, um, is the uh, situation, so the situation isn't that somebody's, uh, who's, this is not their primary residence. They bought this as a uh, investment or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't a second home for them. This is just a business that they're running, basically, is what you're saying. So are they, are they, but they're not renting it all the time. It would seem to me they could make more money they, they renting it you know, on a weekly basis for the entire summer. The reason I ask that is because we do have an ordinance that speaks to when you convert a residence to a commercial use. Um, it, it isn't zoning, it, it, it's a different kind of ordinance, but uh, so I'm just trying to figure out if it, it breaks that threshold. But yeah, it's rented out the entire year as whenever somebody Obviously, in the winter time, it's a little slower. But this winter, you know, we've had four or five people come for the weekends, rented it out. But through the summer, it was booked completely every single day for different parties. Different parties every yeah. day. Yeah. Or, or, they they had, or, or they'd be there for like a weekend, and then Monday there'd be someone there until Friday, and then there'd be someone else there for Saturday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or they would be here, you know, two days during the week. Mm -hmm. You know, just someone who, like local gainers or whatever, someone coming up from Portland, they come. But it wasn't like you know, I was renting a house out for the summer for mm -hmm. three months. You know? Have you had any discussion with anyone else in town? Or is this the first time you had a discussion with any officials here in this town about this? I, I talked to Gary a few times. How long ago was that? I, uh, she knew she knew about it when we were having problems. You know, at the beginning I started talking to her about it, um, and then she said, "When was that?" In the beginning of the summer. This has been an ongoing issue because that house is also involved in a lawsuit with the entire neighborhood because that the Oh, oh is no. This, is this, what's his name's place? This is Gary Fowler's place. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I've only lived there for two years. Mm -hmm. This has been an ongoing problem before that. He lived there before and he, he moved out and now he lives near his home in Gardner mm -hmm. and he has multiple homes. If you go on Airbnb and you can see his profile, he has mm -hmm. four or five houses that he's doing this with. Um, but Obviously, he's not a person that he, he wants to work with you, you know, because I've talked to him about it. I said, I'm right across the street from you. I don't want you to, you know, I want, it's your house for whatever else is going on. It's still your house. You have the right to rent it, but look, come on, deal. Can we get, get on the same page here and not have frat parties? You know, every single, from Thursday till Monday, it was a frat party, a bachelorette party, a bachelor party. Uh, some crazy birthday party. I mean, like I could, I could bring up a lot. I'm not the only person, and it's not the only, uh, only resident. This is just my specific okay. issue. Okay, so it just is it going on in some other properties in town? Oh yeah, like where? Yeah, I mean the the house down the road oh, what from, road? Uh, on Lakeshore Drive at the end was rented for a little while, but we actually asked them, hey, we're having this problem down here. Would you mind not doing that and rent it out at a regular rental? And they said yes. We'll go ahead and. So that's a second one. Yeah. So and I'm, a little, I'm trying oh. to get a feel for the frequency. Yeah, I'm yeah. a little surprised that the county sheriff uh, didn't deal with the no, the noise and yeah. the parking yeah. um, more because I had a similar situation down the street. Well, I didn't. It didn't really bother us too much, uh, but our other neighbor complained uh, when there used to be a lot of parties at a house that's in between us, and and uh, the sheriff's department was all over it. Yeah, I mean they and, they, and got it. You know, stop basically. Yeah, at first, uh, you know, the people even on the telephone when I called them said, Hey, other than us going to tell them to quiet down, there's nothing really that we can do about it. Um, but then I talked to um, Gary Fuller. No, the other day, uh, he was the oh. representative. Oh, he still is. Gary uh, Hillard. Yeah, I talked to Gary Hillard uh, just in passing, and he said, Oh, I know someone. I talked to them, they they did come out now. This is before they weren't even coming out. And then they finally came out and
and they would quiet them down, you know, but as soon as they knew that they were gone, they, they don't care because they're, they're going to they be gone tomorrow, yeah. you know, and they, and I know, uh, I can't remember his name, Fuller, Fowler, he doesn't care either because he, he sends his guys over after it's done and to clean it up, but they leave beer bottles all over the place, they leave it all over the shoreline over there, multiple times I've had to pick up fireworks that they were lighting off at two o'clock in the morning, just knocked them out there. Um, and then we have our boats over there, and a couple of times we had fireworks and stuff that were inside the boats. You know, so we have them all moored out over there in the little peninsula. Uh, but they, they don't care that they, they're just gonna be gone the next day. Yeah. Uh, have you talked to the town code enforcement officer? He's not here tonight, but uh, yeah. Jerry Fuller? No, I have not. I, sent, um, I, I did send an email earlier about some other issue not, not pertaining to this about the septic system. Um, because after they had two parties right in a row where there was 18 plus people there and uh, there was a bad smell mm -hmm. coming from where I know the septic system is and the leach field is. Right. Um, and he said he was going to check it out. I don't know if he, if yeah. he did or not or, or what the problem was. Yeah. Do you, to your oh, knowledge, the, the, the problems that you have either heard of or are familiar with, uh, are they all with Occurring, I'm thinking rentals. People don't typically rent their house inland or whatever for something like that. Are they pretty much in a shoreland zone within 250 feet of the lake? Of these houses that are for the most part of, from the ones that I've talked to, you know, a lot of people have just stopped doing it because they, the house gets destroyed, you know, and they're living there. You know, there's not there's a few people that I know are actually doing this as a business, so the damage is like everybody else. The reason I ask that is that it's possible as we review our shoreline zoning ordinance that we could modify the sections that deal with, uh, you know, uh, uh, right, right now it's just, a, I think it's more or less a policy that rental of uh, uh, summer things is, is not considered commercial from a perspective of commercial, but, you know, we, we could, I'm, I'm not saying we can solve every mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. but you could have, we don't have a standard or something in there, although, you know, I guess it'd be a violation of the plumbing code, but <laughs> nothing in there says that you can't rent your house or that you can, well, well you know, you're giving me these double negatives about, you know, more people staying than the septic system is designed for. Right. Yeah, if there's even a cap on that, I think that would solve a lot of the problems. Well, the, yeah. the other aspect of this is uh, the parking. You can regulate the number of people by regulating the parking. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the town select board in the past has mm -hmm. decided they didn't want to get into the business of regulating parking. Mm -hmm. That would be their, because it's public safety, that's their domain. Mm -hmm. But um, but that would be one route, because uh, mm -hmm. 21 people yeah. need to have a lot of vehicles and, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. likewise if if somebody was doing this on a full-time basis commercially and you know I'm not positive of this but it might trigger the commercial development review ordinance right. yeah. and with if it was a house bigger than 1200 square feet in right. which case then they'd have to get approval from the town that's something the code enforcement officer could deal with to get approval from the town, they would have to provide off-street parking. Yeah, yeah, that would be. And plus, we would have to evaluate their septic system to make sure it was adequate, yeah, as sure. well as other things. I know he's not willing to do that because I'm pretty sure that septic system's failed. Because people, he, he drove big trucks over that. And then all during the summer, when we complained to the people who were parking there about parking on the street, and they, they would park on the beach, park in front of the public, other people. Oh, that's why I never can find a parking yeah. space there. So we would say, hey, you can't park over here. This is for the beach people to come and be able to park. Uh, they said, okay, that's fine. And they would drive all their cars onto the grass. And they would park all their cars on the front lawn, which, you know, it looks trashy. And I don't really want that when people come over and visit my house. It's like, why have they got 20 cars parked on there? That's in the front of their yard, you know? Yeah. And when I bought I'm not saying I'm going to move or anything, but I bought that house with the expectation that my neighbors would have used that house for residential purposes. Mm -hmm. I didn't buy that house expecting someone to put up a Motel 6 across the room. Right. You know? So it definitely decreases the value of the neighborhood and of the homes or, or around it. And he, he really doesn't care. You know, we've asked him, he's like, oh, can I take care of it? And the next day, he's, he's back.
tackle it. He, he's even come out to us and said, there's never going to be a party over there again, don't worry about it. All right, so, all right, so we've got two, two, two properties within this area uh, are getting involved in this rental type thing. Any other properties? Um, you know? I, I can find out. There's a group of people that I've been talking with and that I have emailed James with to see. A lot of them are out traveling right now, so I couldn't really get them. But probably, not that it's mm -hmm. Mr. George's responsibility to find all Airbnbs, yeah. Yeah. Airbnbs in Belgrade, but a search on that in the town could give us a feel too. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's quite a, there was, a, at least during the summer, there was quite a few um, on Brown Long Pond and on the north side of Great Pond. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, right now, the last time I looked, there's only really two or three. Yeah. I think the people are. Time of year, I guess. Yeah. So. I mean, one thing, you know, we have to keep uh, on the flip side of this is keep in mind is one, uh, as Rich said earlier, it's a long standing tradition that summer homes are, are uh, rented for various periods of time by people and have been for, you know, since World War One or whatever. And, uh, and, and that this is a big part of the business that the uh, realtors do. Absolutely. Uh, but that's a little different situation than yeah. what you're describing. Those are... I have a bunch of those. Like I'm, I'm, there's only two people in that, in that entire neighborhood who really lived there all year long. Me and the guy, another guy across the street. Everyone else is just there during the summer or they rent it out for the winter or rent it out for the summer. None of them are a problem. Mm -hmm. They rent them out, people stay there, they're happy, no issues. They treat the property in the neighborhood like they're, that they belong there. It's only the house that has to that rent them out for the weekend. And then I'll get to this other staters who come in and just ruin the place. It's really, it's really a sad thing too because mm -hmm. that property in the back over there where it's a common area for all 20 houses over there, right. it's become a huge problem. Well, plus anybody that lives further down the road yeah. would have a public safety vehicle need to get yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was, that was definitely a huge problem. because I mean, that road's narrow enough as yeah. it is. It's, I mean, it's problematic in its own right. 15 cars, that was like normal. Yeah. During the summer to come down there, there'd be 15 cars all lined up down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's only so much you can do though once they're, you know, once they're there. And the other problem is too, they don't understand that 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 area over there is not that house's. You know, that house is legally built, but you're gonna say that they have a little backyard over there, that whole peninsula area is not theirs. And when we go down there to use it, they get all fired up. You know, multiple times I had confrontations with people who were like, what do you do when I rented this place? This is all ours. And I go, back up, buddy. You know, I lived here. You know, this, this is a common space. He didn't tell me that. That's your problem. You know, deal with it with him. You know, but you know, I'm a young male. I can handle myself. But there are people down there who go down there and they're frightened sometimes to go down there because we got these people who don't understand. You know, there's 20, 25 year old guys drunk down there acting up. You know, it really it, it's a sad thing sometimes for. Yeah. So Travis, you mentioned that uh, you're aware of some. Uh, other towns have had similar problems. Yes. You know, that'd be helpful if you could yeah, so get I, some of that information. I'll send it to you. I had a document, but uh, Karen yeah, asked to print it out. I think I have it. Do you? you want to go put it yeah, on can you? Yeah. The, I mean, the, the, one, the one that I sent you guys is, is specifically for Portland. Um, yeah, I was going to say Portland's been in the press for dealing with this. Yeah. One of the yeah, things that possibly do in, within the show and regs or something come up with, and I know that's not the, all these things that come up, and ideas I have won't solve everything, but when I get the issue of like, limiting parking, limiting the amount of people based on septic system. Yeah, I'm not expecting every problem to be solved. Yeah. Uh, I understand, you know, some, some things are just gonna happen, you have people come over and they're gonna be annoying and you're gonna try to deal with it. Yeah. But if we can have some way, yeah. at least to get it a little bit better, and that way, when I go to talk to him and say, hey, you're violating this code, you know, he can't just say, go stuff it. Well, then yeah. we also, we would have the ability to do something about yeah. it. Yeah. Right now, it's not in our codes yeah. or whatever, but yeah, we could limit it to, uh, and might, again, it's not going to solve them all, but uh, uh, we could have a provision that if, we, if you're going to rent your summer home on the lake or whatever, it's got to be for a period no less than a week or something, yeah. which would... That would solve a lot of problems. The, the, um, I mean, there's two aspects to this. What, what do we have for 
first off, just for your benefit, we don't enforce the town ordinances. Uh, Gary Fuller, the code enforcement officer, that's why I asked. And it's un he, normally he's here and uh, during our meetings, unfortunately, he's not tonight. And we don't really know why, but um, uh, that would have been helpful. It would have avoided one stop because I, I would highly recommend that you yeah. set up a meeting with him. He's usually got office hours on Thursdays. Um, but he's been sick, so I, maybe that's it. Um, he, just, he, did a, he left early, he did a bad back, he fell down. Oh. As well as he was sick with the flu. He, okay, he, yeah, so he's ill, but um, because he's the only one, none of us have any authority to enforce any of these ordinances, only he does. And, and as I said, there's this one ordinance, the Commercial Development Review Ordinance, if, thank you, if somebody's doing this full time as a business, basically, yeah. they don't live there, um, and it, so it's not a home occupation, yeah. you know, that they're doing it a, right. a little bit on the side. Uh, that's only something that Gary could uh, uh, enforce. Yeah, um, I just want to make that clear. I don't want to infringe on people's rights to be able to make a little money on the side. Yeah, no, and, and, just, and, and, the, and the fact that they follow this ordinance wouldn't necessarily, yeah. except that they have to meet certain standards, including noise, including yeah. parking, including yeah. other things. Uh, just right now he has no response. And uh, so, including the septic system, which, you know, has got to be of concern to everybody. I mean, that's a public health hazard in addition to the threat to the lake. Um, the, um, um, the and, and Gary's the plumbing inspector yeah. as well. So, you know, you kind of got it all together there. The other thing is what Rich was describing. Um, I mean, we, Belgrade doesn't have town-wide zoning. Uh, and, uh, and who knows if we ever will. But... But uh, we do have uh, shoreland zoning because it's state mandated. And since probably a lot of this, is, I mean, for example, the house you're describing must be within 250 yeah, feet yeah. of the, of the lakeshore. And I'm guessing the most lucrative properties, many of them are, are going to be. Or, or, um, and um, It's the same property that we told whatever his first name was. Which, uh, yeah, no, I remember he came Clyde, in here. Clyde, he wanted to get permission to split the lot somehow. That yeah, be, right, he wanted to subdivide it. More non-conforming, it's the yeah. same property. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, like Rich said, that uh, we're actually, I mean, this depends on the select board because we hit, this gets a little bit more involved. Yeah. We're trying to figure out what we're going to be working on next for ordinances. Our plan is to work on shoreland zoning. They may want us to work on something different, a sign ordinance. Yeah. But um, the, um, it, um, but you know, it's something that um, maybe we could address when if we're allowed to work on the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. Um, yeah. I definitely appreciate you guys taking the time and considering it because sure. it's a, definitely not a problem. Yeah. But, uh, so far, I know there's Portland, Camden, Rockland, um, another small town, I can't remember the name near Rockland, but they're pretty much... Oh, maybe Rockport. Rockport. Um, and there was one other that have already adopted. Yeah, no, probably yeah. communities that have a lot of I wonder if any of the communities in, along around Sebago Lake have dealt with this, you know, like Naples or something. Yeah, I would wonder. The, um, um, I do know, you know, in terms of, Pete, you were asking about elsewhere in town or inland, you know, away from the lakes. I, I only know, and this is an acquaintance, where they uh, had to, what did they do? I think for work purposes, they had to move to California for six months, so they rented their house for and that's how they did it, but that's not really what we're talking about uh, here. Um, See, those people Airbnb. still live there. You know, they, they, they're going to come back. You know, and they're going to live there. This, this is an issue <laughs> in college towns too. I, my my son, uh, when he was in law school down at University of Virginia in Charlottesville, um, the housing so short, particularly during graduation, that a lot of people rent rooms, yeah. not to mention uh, parts of their homes, other uh, or their garages or something, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I guess it you know could be kind of yeah. problematic. Not wait, not the partying part, but the uh, the parking part and that yeah. kind of thing. I mean, my expectations too would be different if I was living. You know, I'm, I'm I lived in Lubbock, Texas for a long time at Texas Tech University, pretty much almost that entire town. So I, my expectation while I was there was people are going to be partying. Yeah, and right. Really but in Belgrade, you know, my expectation is for the most part, it's going to be pretty low key here. You know, it's going to be quiet. You know, especially you know when you move off to the side of the dead end road. You know, I'm thinking, okay, well, there's a beach there. There's going to be people, but those people are awesome. You know, they're quiet. They don't, they don't cause any problems. It's, it's really not that same problem. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 you guys have come up with a lot of stuff here, so I'm sure you guys don't have minutes and be able to discuss all that. But I'd love to. If you guys keep me involved too. My 
Mike Everly is kind of the person that was heading up the other side of our legal problems with him. So I'm trying to keep him abreast yeah. while he's away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that, um, that, that, that is the other aspect of this. I mean, it, it, it could be addressed through a civil yeah. lawsuit. Yeah, uh, we're hoping that he settles As a nuisance. soon. You know, um, he's already been open to settling because he now knows that the things that he tried to do are not. Yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah, he tried to put it back on you guys <laughs> for, for a long time. You know, he said, that, oh, yeah, this is completely legal, but there's paper roads that go right through the middle of his property that were grandfathered roads that he built on. You know, but that's yeah. a total separate issue. Yeah, right. No, it is a separate yeah. issue. I, I would encourage you, though, to uh, uh, get together with Gary Fuller, the code enforcement officer, because uh, uh, he, he may want to wish, he may wish, to, since he's not here today, we could maybe say the step, but he may wish to discuss this with us again. Yeah, I think I have his email address. I'll email and tell him to ask him to touch base. Yeah, it's guy. actually in Augusta, because yeah. he, he's a full time code enforcement officer in Augusta, but. Uh, uh, does he have office hours every Thursday evening? Here? Yeah. Five to seven, I think. Yeah, I'll ask him to talk to one of you guys first and then yep. set up a no, that's fine. so that he can kind of have some insight of what's going yeah. on. Cause I know he knows the property because I've talked to him and about other problems too. Yeah. Oh, yes, he knows the property. I mean, I don't know what the rest of you think, whether you think I'm way off base with uh, if potentially if it was done you know, as a commercial business most of the time, if not all the time, uh, whether it and it was over 1,200 square feet, yeah. whether it would trigger the commercial development review work. I think it very well could if it was done, let's say, all the time. The person never lived there, never intends to live there, he bought it to, to continue to yeah. rent like that. But yeah. you know, the person who comes up for three weeks during the summer, but has the rest of the summer, he's back home, and he rents it out to people. Yeah, no, I don't think that would. I don't think, think we want to get involved yeah. in Well, I, there's that, plus, I mean, we'd be open one, Big can of worms, yeah. uh, and plus that's not the pro Those aren't the people that are causing the problems. Right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I mean, if this is basically, uh, you know, a, a, know a, a frat house on, on Long Pond. Yeah, I don't know a single person who rents their house out for the summer, or even to multiple people, would do it for less than a week. Mm -hmm. you know, that seems like a, that would be not a good idea. You know, I know if she would do it for a month. Yeah, a month, even yeah. a month yeah. would be fine. They have big crowd, but they're quiet. Well, and there are plenty of cottages that I, I know people from Augusta and that I worked with and stuff that, you know, used to every year rent a cottage for a week out here, you know, yeah. and, and then somebody else would rent it for a week. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think that's the problem that we're they trying to do. They do weekends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, we're, nice I mean, type of thing. Yeah. 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 Personally, when I, when I look at what the, the, the thing about the rental for the weekend with bachelor party, it's kind of like, Jeez, if I own the place, I'd never let that, that happen. This guy, oh, they damaged how it. much damage are you going to end up with? I can tell you one time that it was so bad that you could smell vomit every day outside of the house. His wife came over to, to look at it. She walked in for five minutes and walked back out. Mm -hmm. I said, Is it nice in there? And she said, uh, No, I'm going to have to get a cleaning time. Well, how do you make money at that? Yeah. Well, you know, it deals with How much do they charge? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm just kind of curious. You said 600 bucks, right? 600 a night. Yeah. For each person? No, no. Yeah. It's a flat rate. Yeah, so that's, you know, yeah, you know, you cram it full of people, like you said, yeah. you pay 20 bucks a night, and, yeah. you know, that. And yeah, the, the biggest three one they had was 28 people for four days, Friday, uh, it was Friday through Monday, and it was so full that people were sleeping outside in hammocks and tents and stuff, and it rotated. We, we I think we, uh, speaking for myself, but I think we fully appreciate your concern for yeah. things like that. Yeah. Uh, not yeah. I wouldn't want to live next door. You know, no, no. Being used to We've lost that. two really good neighbors too. I feel bad. You know, they will take sold their house and left just because they couldn't take it. It's been like an eight year battle with, with them. Mm -hmm. We finally left and it was empty for two years. And I was there for the last year. I was like, this is awesome. I don't know what other people complained about. And then he decided he was going to start this business. And In terms of the town being able to do anything in the shorter term, it really falls on his shoulders. Yeah. 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 yeah.
And yeah. I don't think there's a whole lot unless like no, you're no, it, it would, we don't have a whole lot like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Not, not just for this specific issue. I mean, I plan on being here for a while. So, bigger picture, how do we protect the value of the homes in the area yeah. from, you know, worst case scenario, someone comes and buys all the houses on one, on one spot on the lake and just decides they're going to rent them out every day of the week, even though there's much more population. Right. So just so you're clear, um, you know, at this point, our actions uh, have few that we could do to resolve your problem. Yes. Um, although in the long term, it might be wise for us to tighten up some of the language and some, and some more of them, more ordinances to address situations like this. Yes, sir, that's all I know. Yeah, so that's kind of my goal is to be able to get it in your minds and as you're working on those things. So I'm pretty sure this is going to get settled with this person eventually. Couldn't happen again. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't happen to somebody else. Right. You know, and I feel bad for them. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, three houses down the street. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's a little bit disconcerting that law enforcement did not uh, uh, respond with force and time. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll say it that way. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I, I know from this one experience just down the sort of a house caddy across diagonally across the street um, it, it was really the guy lives there you know and 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 so I think it was more that once he was sensitized that it was bothering the neighbors you know it wasn't so much that they brought the, the heavy hand anvil down on his head kind of thing you know they just said we've had complaints and, and he took it to heart because he's not a bad guy but but he and, but he also lives there you know yeah, Gary does it He's already been told us. Well, I got, I got you. The police uh, sent me a letter. I threw it in the trash. I threw it to you. Make sure I write that yeah. one more next time. Because I know from the parking issue that there's nothing for them to enforce because the town doesn't have a town uh, ordinance. Yeah, he, they told us if they're laying on fireworks, then they could actually do something about it. Then they could, they could even arrest the person if they were doing it. But as far as noise, it's really hard to do with fireworks. Now, why why would they not be allowed? To, because a certain time of day or something? No, there's a there isn't a specific ordinance against fireworks usage. Yeah. yeah. And except the Fourth of July yeah. and I think Christmas. Is that Belgrade or is that state? State. 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 Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, they said you know noise. I mean, a couple of times he he one person he talked to pretty strongly, but that was more because the person was being belligerent, you know. But if the person just says okay, that's, yeah. That's, that's, and the yeah. parking thing, he, he did say a few, about the parking, um, he was like, yeah, this is definitely an issue. But he's like, I don't know really what I can do about it right now other than uh, put in my report. Yeah. Right. You know, he's like, I can't call someone to come and tow all these people because I don't know. You know, he's like, especially these people at the, at the beach. He's like, yeah, there's not supposed to be any overnight parking over here, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. You know he's well, really and, like, and, you know, there's a sign there that says that but whether there's an ordinance to back it up yeah. or somebody just you know the town just stuck up a sign hoping people would comply with it to, or would be a good question you know again the town doesn't have a parking ordinance yeah someone put a no parking sign on uh, my side of the road over there and i was like oh that's awesome and a lot of people just listen to it there's a few people who were like they can't do that and they just parked there and i was like oh, well we just don't park in front of our bridge because it's not going to walk across the beach I didn't really know it enough to argue with them, but I was like, hey, if I see a no parking sign, I'm not parking there. I'm pretty sure there's no, no idiot sign that we can put in front of the house either. So. <laughs> Doesn't mean they would comply. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Um, and I will uh, keep you all in the fight or anything. I make a motion that George sings happy birthday to Travis. <laughs> no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't want to do that. That would curdle the gate. <laughs> It is, I, you know, I think there is something we could probably do with when we work on short on the zoning and, yeah. and say it happens elsewhere in town and nothing to do about it, but you know, we could put a few things in there that yes. 
Uh, Georgetown might have also had it. And if that yeah, happens, that happens down, um, down, you know, I mean, down on Forest Point Road, yeah. I get a, a full house down there for a month, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's, it's affecting the sewer system down there. And uh, so. But it's not it's not that situation just to, for the weekend, you know, this is for the whole month. They'll have you know, twenty, thirty people down there. Mm -hmm. I think just before you come on though, we had another problem down there in, in the sand pit. And it was called the carnival. Uh -huh. And this is what's going on. Yeah. Now Peter wasn't on when we did that. I don't think Peter was on the board then. Mass gathering ordinance. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you were oh, here oh. for that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That one down in the, in the village. Yeah. Right. Right. That's, yeah. that's right. what kicked kick right. that that ordinance in. So right. this is just a basically a continuance of it. Right. And really, the town has got to come to grips with that. At some point, we're going to have to have some enforcement authority that's available. Yep. And until that time, we will be hamstrung. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. So. So we hire a football team to build a baseball bat. guidelines or things to look at there's there's enough in our non-conformance yeah. section that's uh, problematic I think that we need to do yeah. we should be doing that anyway yeah. right. 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 so 
and there are a number of recommendations in the comprehensive plan that are mm -hmm. uh, that uh, deal with the shoreland zone. So I'm thinking with some focus uh, on shoreland zone, you know, I'm not trying to predict or project the timeline that we haven't even yet discussed, but I'd like to think that we have this year to do that, work on those things, perhaps looking ahead to divide <coughs> the months so that we, perhaps the, if we do have an uptick in applications that come in for permits, we can handle those at some times, and at other times, or other meetings, we some approach that would make some sense both for the town, um, the taxpayers, being fair to the ordinance and also thinking about the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Try to keep all those things in mind with our volunteer organization as well. So if, if that sounds you know acceptable to all of you folks, I would, you know, I'd like to keep that idea alive and, and go forward with that. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, uh, I think that's the only way we can handle it. Otherwise, you know, uh, I really don't know what the select board's expectations are. You know, I don't think they really, judging by what was on the tape, they obviously didn't discuss it. And they probably didn't think about it. So, um, yeah, I'm sure that they just heard Dennis and whatever his name is, uh, Paul. Paul. Oh, sorry. Uh, Pete, not Peter. Uh, get too many Peters around. They just let that. Mm -hmm. No, they heard from them, the three and all of a sudden. say that we couldn't use a sign ordinance, but I hope they, you know, just, you know, until Paul looked at our sign standards, it wasn't even an issue about sign zoning or the sign ordinance, and all of a sudden it becomes the, oh yeah, we got to get on that, or we got to do that, and it's like, no. Well, and the only can't. feedback we got about signs was in pushing up, wanting to push us in the other direction, you know, Prohibiting the uh, electronic changeable signs altogether, you know. Right. So. Yeah, and then we could consider the selectmen, and we could bring it up when we talk to the selectmen that maybe we could do the sign uh, ordinance along with the uh, shoreland zoning. And if we did something like that, we could uh, ask or ask, to ask or ask extra help. You know, Dennis, Dennis, and uh, and Paul. There's no reason why, you know. Uh, selectmen could assign some type of, you know, task to them. And the selectmen can do that. Well, I, I mean, I think that's what they volunteered to do. My concern, though, is that's still going to take a lot of our time. Just look at how long, you know, how much time we get gets consumed just in discussions with him. I mean, he's not the easiest guy to work with, to be frank. Uh, I mean, he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. You know, he doesn't like the he doesn't like the compromise. And so, you know, I, I, I could see what we've seen so far being the case, and, you know, we'll just go around in circles and waste a lot of our time. I also have, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I, I look at Paul in terms of if you just let him run with something, it's kind of like letting the fox watch the chicken coop. Now, he was in the business of selling signs. He said he retired. I don't know. Sounds to me like he's still in business. I was going to say that I think there's a there's a personal uh, con well, was, I, there's, to me there's some conflict there. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean I wouldn't want to be in his shoes once the public gets involved reviewing that sign ordinance because people will be all over that because he's well known in town as a sign salesman. Right. And you know I, I guess I'm still of the opinion and I'd be happy to share this with you and I'd be happy to share this with the select person, but I'm just not aware of, of the fact that we have a problem at this time. And I, I'm still not convinced that that would w warrant an entire sign ordinance. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone else wants to do the work on it, that's fine. Um, then I'd be happy to, at the right time, examine the contents of that ordinance and see how that applies to what we've done so far and also see how it lines up with the comprehensive plan and recommendations that have been 
studied and brought forward over time. But um, if pressed, you know, about whether or not business is hanging on a sign only, on the development of a sign only, um, my firm conviction is the infrastructure is what's holding it up, not a sign only. Yeah, yeah. No, that, so that for the lack of the infrastructure. Without public yeah. water, without public sewer, I don't see, you know, you know, businesses streaming in here, you know, you know, and, and then turning around at the door and saying, oh, we can't do it because of the, without a sign only. We would have heard about it if that was the case by exactly. now, long before yeah. now. Yeah. Dollar General would have asked for a waiver yeah. if it was important to them. Yeah. It's not important to them. Well, that's the kind of discussion, you know, needs to be made to the selectmen. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why it's and see, where they, that way. Where are they coming from? Yeah. And I'm not convinced that a, a 32 square foot sign saying Hannaford out in front of the old envelope factory or, the, you know, the stewards wouldn't be big enough to draw people to know there's a hamper there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so right. I, the, w one thing I will mention, um, uh, I went to that old Farts and Liars DEP retirees luncheon and, and Dennis Ketchell was there and, oh, okay. and he cornered me and, and he said, well, what do you think about that ordinance? And, you know, the sign ordinance. And I, I, I was trying to be diplomatic and I said, well, it's a good first step, but it, uh, uh, it really needs a lot more work. And he said, what do you mean? What do you mean? You know, and, and, uh, and I said, well, first off, it isn't even drafted like an ordinance. And secondly, it isn't even user friendly. It's incredibly long and complex. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I didn't say this, but, you know, you want to be business unfriendly. That's the, there's the ordinance for you right there, you know. Six pages of definitions. So. Yeah, uh, but, um, but. Anyway, you know, I told them, I said, you know, we, we need to talk to the selectmen first about what our priority, what they see, whether they agree with our priorities and what our work plan is, you know, yeah. that our, our priority is Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, and Dennis actually said he agrees with that. Um, but he was, convinced, he was convinced that the select board would say the sign ordinance is the top priority. Which is, um, but you know, I, I, with all due respect, Pete, I, I disagree. I, I don't think we can work on two ordinances at the same time. I don't think we have the time, the capacity. Yeah, of the but time. I, when I say we, I'm saying I'm talking it and have a, a, a sub group doing it. They they do most. They do 99 percent of the work. Oh, I agree. They should do the yeah. heavy lifting. They're the ones that volunteered for this. Yeah. So, but so, but, but you know, like I, you've already seen, they consume and he consumes an incredible amount of our time. He I just will not shut up. I haven't seen that. I get it. One thing, I, I, I would have used it. You know, the jurors have been both of us kind of indicated of, uh, you know, we can work with Peter saying we got to work them both together and let, and then just say we could have let them do the heavy work. I'm somewhat uh, very uneasy with kind of passing it off to somebody to do most of the work. And then it comes back to us, and we haven't had a whole lot of the input to begin mm -hmm. with. It's like you're in this defensive position of trying to sh things you don't like, shooting it down instead of being part of the. Well, the, the only together. the only way it would work is if they view their role as being basically a consultant to us, uh, yeah. and we told them what to do, mm -hmm. and they did it. Yeah. And you know, you've seen it in the times when Mr. lassard has been here. He's. That's not his mindset. It's his way or the highway, well, basically. I, I, one of the things in particular, that I, you know, he's got that alternative thing on, on the ordinance, an option thing of a changeable sign. Personally, I'm in no, my personal thing is, I don't, would not favor anything that, uh, that allows signs to change more often than state law permits. I don't think, as a town, we want to get involved in, in dairy anything. Well, and that's an important point to make with the select board. I mean, this is going to be an additional work for Gary because the permitting falls on his shoulders, and then, you know, this is going to could result in him getting complaints and, and signs are the kind of thing that people get kind of upset about. Um, but uh, and whether he has the time for that, you know, he works for 15 hours a week. I mean, and he's the plumbing inspector to the boot. You know, at, at some point, uh, oh, it gets too much. I could 
could interject this, maybe um, whenever the sign ordinance draft language um, comes in, have it uh, that the select persons, you know, are responsible. Not for enforcing it, but handling all of it. Permitting? They, they're in charge of permitting for that. Sure. It's just an idea. Yeah. It happens in other towns, you know. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. you know um, just an idea. The, the, uh, I think that, um, you know, I, I think it would be a much more manageable task if, um, you know, we were, um, I, I mean, I, let me go back a step. What Mr. Lassard has provided us, and, and I, I truly do mean this, that what he's, if we were going to work full time in the, on a sign ordinance, that's what the select board wants us to do, forget everything else. Um, then, uh, you know, he's given a start, us a starting point, but at the end of the day, it's this board that has to sign off on it. Right. It's this board that has to recommend it to the select board. It's this board that has to feel good about it going to the public. Right. And if it, and I just see a lot of conflict with Mr. Lassard at trying to reach that point and, and it would be an incredibly inefficient process. Because I, I just haven't seen any indication from him, and this goes back to what you were mentioning earlier when we were discussing the minutes of the aha moment, but whether it's not, he doesn't understand or whether he just doesn't want to understand, um, you know, him being able to compromise. So, you know, you know, a number of things are going to be, have to be decided. Number one, Will this board or will there be an entity that be um, charged with coming up with this sign ordinance? You know, and if the answer is yes, I would be asking if it's this board, does that mean that that reprioritizes our work? If that answer is yes, that means that we're going to be doing the sign ordinance first, and then I really want to make them, them, the select persons, know that if that's truly what they they think is the most important thing, and I want to make it clear that I do not think it is the most important thing. Maybe we can make it a, a kind of, does everybody here agree that it shouldn't be our number one priority? So you don't have to say, you don't think it oh, is. Okay. The yeah. board does not think yeah. it should be. Because yeah. it's not a unilateral thing. I'm just yeah. saying. No, just, well, I, I mean, I'm certainly in agreement there. It's, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have even come to the surface if it wasn't for Mr. Lassard. I'm okay with handling it as our second priority other than permitting and shoreline zoning, but we, you know, and, and you know, the, the state really wants us to update our shoreline zoning. They haven't done any mandates and stuff, but it's well, something they're really looking forward to. To be honest to. with you, for me, it's not even our second priority. No. As far as I'm concerned, it's after the subdivision ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. I think the subdivision ordinance, and it's so out of date that subdivisions have a far greater impact on uh, not only the lakes but the quality of life in town, um, than you know, um, than signs. Particularly yes. since uh, you know I'm still trying to click rich. I I, right. I yeah. can't. Can I, I don't see what the problem is. Can I make a motion that we uh, among our fun, the motion is that the board feels that the uh, for uh, for number two priorities are. Uh, Shoreline zoning update and doing applications, and the the uh, sign ordinance would be thereafter. Mm -hmm. so we have a, so we have a motion then. So you're saying that we would represent this to the select persons? Yes. So you're saying if uh, our first priority uh, would be shoreline zoning uh, and permitting. Right. And our second priority would be the sign ordinance, and then our fourth priority is the subdivision ordinance. No, no. I just said that the the uh, the sign ordinance would be thereafter. I'm not saying whether it was oh, where the fifth, is there. third, or whatever you say right. is thereafter. Right. So, so we could could essentially say shoreline zoning is number one with permitting. Um, is our top priority. Top priority. 
Because then we'd get into the debate of what comes next. Right. right. Okay, so Thanks we have a good. motion, right? I'll to second that. Okay, so more discussion. So if we go, then go to the select persons and, and you know, just maybe we can have our minutes by then. So, you know, this is, this is what we're, what we understand and believe are, are our priorities are these things, as you stated. Um, the best interest of the town at this point. Yeah. Then they would know that we have the expectation that our workload would be for those things that we just talked about. And that sign ordinance would be some sometime thereafter to be determined, if you will. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and depending on how that discussion goes, that we not forget about the subdivision ordinance. Right. We certainly let them know that that's uh, it, it might, high on the list. It, you know. it, it, well, this is a, a map. Maybe we should vote first, but as a matter of technique or, or presentation, Peter, uh, you know, you may want to spell out, this is what our current work plan is. Now that, you know, the sign ordinance, where does it fit in kind of thing, you know? Here's what we think our priority, next priorities are. Let's go back a year and a half ago when the comprehensive plan got voted in. We sat down and we said, we have to bring all the ordinances up to the comprehensive plan. Peter says, what are we going to work on first? So we've got one done. Suddenly, because there's really no problem, we're going to have to throw everything away and say the heck with the comprehensive plan for maybe a year to get this other ordinance in? Right. I think we ought to stick to what we've originally done. And, and I think you're correct. I think if we work on the sign ordinance, it will delay the shoreland zoning ordinance by a year at, at, at least. I think the sign, or sign ordinance will run into a lot of opposition from the voters. You know, the selectmen kind of put it on us, it sounded like it, without even asking us first what we had in mind. Right, right. That's why the, I think having a way to state <coughs> this. Yeah. No, that's a good suggestion on Pete's part. Right. So uh, um, after we vote, I'd like to do a quick review of, of our spreadsheet that did, does kind of lay out at least, at least list the ordinances and associates where the recommendations are to be found in each ordinance, right. whether it be updated. And subsequent to our discussion, prior discussion of that is when we came up with, you know, we didn't write it down, but other than then in our minutes, of, you know, the order in which we would do things. I mean, yeah. you know, there's True. consensus about that. Yeah. But we need to vote yet. Yeah. So we've had some good discussions. We have a motion on the floor, a second to that discussion. All those in favor? So, um, Roger, you and did you? No, I'd rather stick with that plan. Oh, so did you vote in favor of what? No. Nope. Okay, so what was it? No, it was. I'm not. I just want a discussion, maybe, or something. But Roger voted against it, right? Right, sir. Yeah. I kind of, I don't want to make sure that Roger's not confused. And essentially voting for showing going first essentially goes with that plan, isn't it? Against the plan of doing one ordinance, then going with the sign. I think we ought to put the sign to wherever it's going to fall into whatever the comprehensive plan wants us to change it to. Okay. And, and I, just so you think, just so I can kind of clear my head, when Pete said thereafter, so it was, it was Shoreland Zone and application and sign thereafter. To me, it does not mean it's immediately following Shoreland Zone. It's just we determine. I think that ought to be stipulated that it's going to fall in whenever because somebody's going to say, because the, the suggestion was made that you do the Shoreland and then this falls in. Yeah. That's no, how they're going to interpret Roger it. makes an excellent point. I could see the select board arriving at the same conclusion that. Uh, after we're done with shoreline zoning, we're immediately going to work on the sign ordinance. Because yeah, that's there after. So, you know, one way to deal with that is if we want to keep our options open for what we deal with thereafter, you know, <coughs> sign versus subdivision, um, the uh, one way would be to reword the uh, motion to that our top priority for 2017 is shoreland zoning ordinance and permitting. 
I guess I'd, I'd and say leave it at that. I thought we voted on uh, when we got Yeah, well, what you do is just, you know, to vote on what my motion is, to vote on it, and then if you want to, you know, just rethink it, you know, vote on it, and just turn it down if you want, and then okay. just put another motion forward. That's I'm going to revise my motion now. Yeah. Okay. I'll do, I'll do the same, because I, I think we, what I thought we, I know Peter said something about, and what he meant by thereafter was, then we kind of get together and figure out what we're going to do. I really think once you, we mention to the select person what we got planned a year and a half, three years ago, mm -hmm. for us to work on all the ordinances and tweak them all, and now suddenly they want us to drop it everything and mm -hmm. start an all new one. Before you know it, we're going to have another new comprehensive plan in, and we still haven't brought all the ordinances up. So they should prioritize it too, but they can't do that without knowing what we have in mind. Right. Okay, so I'll just stay where I am with my votes. We have uh, two in favor, three against, and so the motion fails. So then we should come up with wording for a new motion to come up with something that we could present to the select persons about how we feel our mm. work plan should go. I mean, I think we're all we're sort of, yeah, in agreement, it's just, wording it so that we, you know, the motion says what we are agreeing to. And, and so just in the way of clarification, let me just ask everybody, um, is it everybody's uh, desire to um, keep this to sort of shorter term, you know, like I said, I made the suggestion, our priority for 2017, or do we want to have it, the motion reflect um, our current work plan, which is, you know, our priorities are, our top priority is permitting, uh, followed by working on the shoreland zoning ordinance, and and then thereafter, and followed by the subdivision ordinance, and period. Right, we can do that, and then and then we're going to then it'll get discussed at the meeting, right? And then the selectmen are going to say, well, they're going to make their, give their input, and they're going to obviously bring up the signage one. So we're going to get a real hard commit from them, and will give us a lot, of, which will give us a lot of direction. We force the issue. And if, if the selectmen really want a signing ordinance, they can work with Paul mm -hmm. and Dennis, and when they think they got it down pat, come to our meeting, all the selectmen and Paul and Dennis, and we'll sit down and we'll talk over what they've got planned. Seems that we all have to agree to it. We do have to be a little careful of the unintended, law of unintended consequences. Um, this is a two-edged sword uh, from my perspective, <coughs> and maybe I, I'm the only one that feels this way, but let's say this, we, this is why the, the listening to the tape last time was so helpful to me because I was, it was, um, I wasn't sure what our role was. On one hand, I, you know, go and do whatever the hell you want, you know. Uh, um, but on the other hand, it would, um, if they were working just for the con uh, for the select board, we don't know what they would. They probably would just go with whatever Dennis and and right. and, uh, and Mr. Lassard proposed, whether it's good for the town or bad for the town. Um, whereas if we're involved, we can put keep it in the context of the other ordinances, the comprehensive plan, and look at it in a, with you know sort of a broader perspective, um, and um, and I think it would be a better final product. I mean that's the role that planning boards have statutorily, right. but um, uh, so you know I would be worried about the outcome, frankly, if. if we were uh, excluded from the process entirely. So I think it's, um, I think we need to be a little careful that we don't, I, I, I know I'm sounding like we want our cake, or, or I want my cake and eat it too. Um, um, but um, uh, I think the right approach is, if they want, if the select board wants a sign ordinance, great. But what's the priority of that, working on that right. versus all the other tasks that we have? That's what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah I agree. And but I, I, I also think George made this, I don't know if it was a formal motion or whatever, but shoreland zoning and permitting followed by subdivision, the subdivision thing. 
I think we ought to at least vote on that so that when we go in there, we say these are really, these are our priorities at this point. So they are meat and potato things that need to be done. Yeah. Yes. And that, just so you know, that, that excludes still mentioning work on minimum lot and the replacement. Some right. Things are small, but mm -hmm. still, that excludes those. Right, yeah. No, we haven't even talked about those. Right. So um, I am fine to, uh, with if, if I'm sensing that there are, that we can craft something that will state our priorities as you indicated, George, that would hone in on, on those first three items application, shoreline zoning, revision, zone ordinance revision, and subdivision ordinance revision. Period. That takes us through almost two years. Yep. Yeah, at least. You know. So uh, I am absolutely. And the comprehensive plan got voted on what was it, two or three years ago? Well, finally in 2000, spring of 2014. So here we are in 17. Another two years before we tweak what we have here, half of this comprehensive plan is gone. They just start another one because it's every 10 years. Right. So, so and let me. Uh, if we don't get to them, they'll say, look at that, we passed that right. plan and nobody did anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me just re put that motion out there again for your everybody's benefit, including Nick's. Uh, so I make a motion that um, our top priority is permitting um, and revisions to shoreline zoning ordinance. Uh, our next priority is uh, revisions uh, to the subdivision ordin ordinance. I'll just stop there. Second. After our <coughs> Motion? Oh, second. second. Well done. Any more discussion on that? All those in favor? All right, perfect. Well, Pete came up with the idea, you know, I mean, he was right on the money. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a matter of kind of getting it the way we need it to be. It's making our process work. Yeah. That, that counts. So. I was starting to feel like the slug was trying to throw us under the bus. <laughs> well, really, I, I feel you. I haven't uh, perceived that yet, but it could be a precarious position, you know, uh, or we could be in a precarious position. Depends on who's talking to whom and how much is being said and what's being said. And, and whether people are listening. Especially when they don't know what we have planned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You know, and, and I got to raise the flag on that one too. I mean, we told them this at least twice. Yep. Now, whether or not they remembered is a different whether or not they've asked is another story. But I'm happy to tell them again, and I'll be happy to do so on next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So we'll do our thing. It's OK. Well, we'll be there. We'll yeah. be back. I, you know, I intend to be there to back you. you know. Excellent. Hopefully we're not the last one on the agenda. Hey, you got anything to do with that? Yeah. 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 Transparency is sort of a separate s subject, uh, and if I may, sure. uh, Nick has already, there are really three elements to this. Nick's already taken care of one, and that is the town calendar that's on the front page of the website. Our meetings are now listed there, so, you know, somebody doesn't have to go digging into the bowels of the uh, 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 website to, you know, know what, that we're, when we meet. Um, the other two things, though, was Placing the uh, other two suggestions I had was for us to consider was uh, placing the agenda on the town website and or emailing it out in advance of the meeting, you know, like about the same time we get it to the same group of people that get the select board's agenda. I mean, that avoids having to create a new list or anything like that. We just use the same list of people that are interested in knowing what's going on in town. Um, the last time I saw that, it's not as, it's obviously a different list than what Mary Vogel had, and it's not quite as long, but, you know, it has some of the same people, you know, Howard Hollinger, um, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, Jack, uh, 
the Olivers, uh, you know, people, I, uh, I don't know, I didn't see anybody from Ham and Lumber on it, but, uh, you know, those kind of folks that want to know what's going on in town. Sure. That would be my my two suggestions. Uh, and that way, because right now people, yeah, they know we meet, but they don't know what's on our agenda and, and how, you know, it's sort of like when we were trying to figure out what was on the select board's agenda, we didn't know because, you know, we didn't receive it. Um, and sometimes you can't find it on the website in advance. And so, does that sound doable? Yes. Yeah, that would, does. The agendas are now on the website. Oh, it is. All right. Okay. I, okay. All right. So, so really, it's just the email part that hasn't been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. That and that's not too much work or anything. I know when Mary would, um, left, there was a problem because I, sent, I, I take it. Her, her, the distribution list for the agenda for the select board was like a personal group list that was only on her in her email. Yeah. Has that been rectified? I Howard gave me all of her contacts, but they're just in one lump sum. And some of those emails don't even work now. So okay. Oh, but stuff. you had to recreate it basically. Yeah. 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 I, I just didn't know if. You know, there's a single group list basically no. that the entire town office can use. That's that's basically how I took it from Mary the last time she was here. She says, I have my own list for emails and I'm keeping it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that regardless, uh, yeah. I was just curious, but uh, but that's a good point though about about um, who has what list, and I guess I would then suggest that uh, um, no matter what you do, if you can come up with a way that I don't care how you solve it. I just would like to make it that it's not like only within one person. Yeah. House. I mean, if it, from the office management perspective, that would be the efficient way. I mean, that's not my job, but but you know, I mean, I was thinking of the list we used to have at DP on the H drive. Right. Um, exactly. Um, yeah. So, and anything. For I don't know what the town has for a net internal network, but. But thank you for forgetting on those other two things. Yep. I had one, one question about the uh, town website. Uh, um, I was looking for the uh, last year's town report. That's on there. And I found it. And uh, I was using um, Google Chrome, I believe. And I, I thought I could then download the, the town report. But I think what I found was rather than having the contents of the whole town <laughs> Cut and paste, copy and paste. Then I couldn't do it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. That, it's that time of year, isn't it? Yeah, so, but I did pass one on, I think it's an Anthony on the 26th, so I got it in. But anyway, that, that, that's how I stumbled upon it. Okay. Yep. Ah, I think it's your time. Yep. Yeah, that's your time to just stick it in and it will you know, scan it and shows up on the computer. What's that? You have to scan it. document and then make it workable that you can work on it and somehow convert there it. Are ways there are ways to do that, that. but you, you have, have to have you have to buy a special program right to convert it from a from a PDF PDF to yeah. doc yeah. and, and you have to buy a special program <laughs> yeah. 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 some of them have this way to do um, it's called optical character recognition so it, mm -hmm. it sees the stuff on this says, oh that's text and uh, they give you the option to output it as a, as a working document and not just so there are ways to do that. Yeah. But you have, that has to be done on the printer. You have to have the right kind of device. printer to do that. Yeah. Right? And I, I've, okay. 
Easier not on my computer at home, but <laughs> at the you know one we had at work, I could copy it, paste it into a Word document, and then I could edit it. Yeah. But not a, you can't always do not with every PDF. So there are ways to make. You got that smirk in your face, Peter, about that. You know, that's a big secret as, as how to do that. Uh, well, uh, no, I'm just like I'm thinking about how complicated it can get. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I've wanted to do that before. You know, I mean, I PDFs are documents are made PDFs, so they make it hard. For a reason. <laughs> yeah. So, are there any other updates? I guess uh, from anybody. Um, Cheryl wanted to know if you guys, when the CDR goes to the motors, do you want them to see it with the edits? Or do you want it to see the final version? You know what I mean? So they can see what changed and see what didn't change. Ooh. Like, do you I, want to keep that red stuff in there? I, I, I have an immediate response to that. And you guys can help me think. We switched and moved a lot of stuff around. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's going to be very confusing to have all the edits show up. Yeah. I, I, I agree, and, and we had actually had a similar conversation about this, Nick, long before you got here with, um, with uh, uh, Chris Huck from, from, um, from KV Cog about that very fact. And we, at that point, it seemed like my recollection is that we had kind of, I don't know about decided, but we were inclined to keep it that way until such time, uh, uh, until after we had cool. gotten past the select board. Because we wanted to make sure the select board understood where the changes were, um, but after that, you know, do as Peter said, you know, just to provide the voters with a clean copy, so that uh, otherwise, they, any time we moved something, they would they might get confused and think it was an actual substantive change. All right, thanks. Anybody else with any updates or anything? We can chew up time no matter what, can't we? <laughs> Nick doesn't want to quit yet. Yeah, uh, uh, getting into fights lately? Any fights with the chainsaw? Well, what a, what a no, I'm still recovering from that one. They, uh, I got my staples out, and the next day it split open. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, kind of like, uh, I'm not, it's, it's getting pretty well healed now. But I'm going to give it a few more time than what I think because I don't want to happen again. Yeah. So you didn't have to get more staples in. No, they said they wouldn't. They don't do it. It started like it healed quite a bit and stuff. They said if we tried to staple or sew it again now, it's more likely to introduce infection. Oh, I um, And it's kind of just got to heal on its own. But yep. What do you do to yourself? I put a chainsaw <laughs> on my knee. Which knee? My left one. You, you wear those 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 uh, chaps. <laughs> chaps. I went out the next day and bought a pair. <laughs> you know, I, I was doing I was doing you know uh, just what you were doing, and I had to have my chaps on. Uh, Boy, was I glad yeah, I, had you, you I couldn't believe it. Work, It'll huh? go through you just like butter. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. believe it. And I was so I was so glad I had those chaps on. Yeah. Yeah. And this I was glad that you know the chain was still going, I, I, you know, it wasn't at the throttle. Right, but I still. I just happened to get it too close. When I yeah. cut the branch, somehow I got it too close. Yeah, that's what I did, you know, just a little bit close, yeah. but the chap yeah. stopped it. Yeah. I said, oh my well, God. Well, I got him now. Yeah. <laughs> the horse is gone, but he's got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, on a separate note, I saw, this is not kind of I saw a uh, 